Although they... Although they don't... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my October wrap up 2020. I read a total of 11 books so I will be splitting this up into two parts. This is part one. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I read is Sources Say by Lori Goldstein and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows the student council elections at Asadia Charter School and it's never really been a big deal at this school but after a very public and nasty breakup, Leo and Angeline, two of the most popular people at the school, end up running for president against each other. Angeline's sister Kat runs the school's newspaper. She tries to cover both competing parties in an unbiased way, but then an anonymous news source called The Shrieking Violet changes the playing field. As things get more personal as the days to election day ticks down, the student body begins to be engaged in the race like never before and thus begins the battle of the exes. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did. For the most part, I was just kind of bored with the story. I was never truly invested in it. I didn't really care about the characters or what happened to them. It felt like I was reading the book just to finish it. I wasn't really a fan of either sister either. Angeline was a very successful vlogger, which I thought, oh, maybe I will relate to her because I do YouTube as well, but she was very narcissistic and just obsessed with her subscriber count and didn't really care about other people's feelings as long as she was continuing to grow her channel. I definitely liked Kat more than Angeline, but I still didn't really care that much about her, although I did like how their relationship as sisters grew and they became closer as the story progressed. And then Leo, the competitor, he was alright as a character, but again, I just didn't really care that much for him, so overall it was very average. The biggest complaint I have is that the book was so long, it definitely could have been a lot shorter and still gotten the exact same point across. So yeah, 3 out of 5 stars, very average. The next book I have is Black Sun by Rebecca a roan horse and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows two different storylines that come together on the winter solstice which also happens to land on the solar eclipse this year. The first storyline follows Zyla who is a teak and the captain of a ship on their way to Tova. She has been tasked to bring Serapio, a seemingly harmless young blind boy, to Tova with her. Serapio is destined to, to be the vessel for the Crow God. And then the second storyline follows Narampa, who is the sun priestess, and she has been waiting to celebrate the convergence of the sun and the moon, while also dealing with several attempts on her life. So I definitely did not like this as much as other people have been. If you are on Goodreads, everybody has been rating this book 5 out of 5 stars. I give it a 3.5. It just wasn't for me and I don't know if that is just because I don't usually read epic fantasies because I just don't understand them. My brain is not that big and I just can't focus that long on all the different players in the game, you know? My favorite character was definitely Zyla. She is so fierce and a bisexual badass, the captain of a ship. I'm here for it. I also just love that she is a mermaid slash siren. I'm not really sure which one she is or if they count as the same thing. Again, I don't read high fantasy. I don't know. I really liked her growing relationship with Serapio. I definitely enjoyed their storyline better than Narampa and the watchers. I also really liked the flashbacks to Serapio's life as he was growing up and becoming the vessel to the crow god. At times during Narampa's storyline I was very bored and I just didn't really care about what was going on in that plot line. I wanted to get back to the chapters about Serapio and Zyla. I just didn't care for the other storyline which I think really brought down the whole enjoyment of the storyline for me. I do think that the world building was very well done. It was very interesting to learn about the Teak people as well as the Watchers. So overall, I am intrigued with the series. I'll probably pick up the second book if I find a copy of it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to find a copy of it, if that makes any sense. But yeah, 3.5 out of 5 stars. I just didn't love it as much as other people seem to. The next book I have is Kind of a Big Deal by Susan Hale, and I really 
really did not like this book. I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars and the 0.5 is probably being generous because I didn't want to be really mean and give it a 1 star. But this follows Josie Pye who after dropping out of high school travels to New York City in the hopes of becoming a Broadway star. Unfortunately she was not as big of a deal as she thought she was. She doesn't make it to Broadway and she ends up moving to the middle of nowhere, Montana, and becomes a nanny for a little girl named Maisie. She's also been struggling with the feeling of her boyfriend Justin and best friend Nina growing very distant from her since she left. But on a walk one day with Mia, they stumble across a bookstore and decide to go in where she purchases a book and then they go to a park. While she's there, she begins reading her book. Next thing Josie knows, she is sucked into the book she is reading and literally becomes the main character of the book. She quickly becomes obsessed with the idea of diving into the next story and she forgets her real life along the way and it's like the story of that. So I was not a fan of this writing style. It was extremely repetitive and just honestly annoying. I hated every second of it but I felt like I needed to read the book since I was sent it for review. So I felt like, you know, I had to finish it so I did and it was just not good. <laughs> Josie was probably my most hated character I've ever read from. She was just so annoying and full of herself and entitled. She thought she was just so much better than everybody else but was constantly proven that she is just a brat, honestly. She's also obsessed with her boyfriend who she hasn't really talked to since she left for New York City, which was like months ago, and she ends up taking his last name as her like stage name but she's not talking to him so it doesn't really make any sense it's just weird and then she meets a boy named Dio at the bookstore and instantly becomes obsessed with him and it's just very confusing if you love your boyfriend so much why are you you know gallivanting with another boy I just didn't understand it but like I said the only reason I finished it was because I felt like I needed to and it was a pretty short book but it honestly just felt like a chore reading it so I would not recommend this one if you're looking for a middle grade book it's it's not a good one honestly I don't even know if it's middle grade I think it's supposed to be young adult but it's like the very low end of young adults. The next two books are by the same authors. They are companion novels to each other. The first is Sky in the Deep and the second is The Girl the Sea Gave Back, both by Adrian Young. I gave up both of them 3.5 out of 5 stars. The first one follows the Riki and the Ashka clans. They are rivals to each other. They have a blood feud with one another where they go to battle every five years. Years ago, Elin's older brother, Eri, was killed in one of these battles. During the next battle, Elin is struck down and kidnapped by by members of the Riki clan, which one of them ends up being her brother. By saving Elin, Eri has put the life that he has built with the Riki clan at risk. So Elin is hidden by the family that Eri has grown very close to, and she must act as their slave in order to stay safe, and it's like the story of that. The book starts off with this epic battle scene, so I was instantly hooked right from the beginning. I was fully invested in these two clans. I loved learning more about both of them. Elin was a great main character. She was very fierce and she loved so deeply about those that she cared about. I really liked the found family in this and the growing relationships throughout. I'm a really big fan of enemies to lovers trope, so I was a big fan of the romance in this, and it's a slow burn, so it's like double the fun. The ending is my biggest complaint. It was very rushed, and I feel like it could have been fleshed out a little bit more, but I still really enjoyed the story, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the next book takes place 10 years after the Riki and Ashka clans are united, I guess you could say. This story follows the Svel people who believe that they have been cursed by a truth tongue named Tova. Tova washed up on their shores as a baby and they took her in. Although they don't actually want her there, they rely on her ability to read the future from the runes. When Tova makes a troubling prediction about the Riki clan, the new leader Holverd must decide what to do in order to keep his people safe. This is very similar to The Sky in the Deep with the Viking battles. It was very epic and fun to read about. I really like seeing Halvard, who is Fist's the love interest in The Sky in the Deep's younger brother. It was really fun to see him all grown up and in a position of power. I was also a big fan how the romance was not a huge focal point in this book. We saw little hints of it, but it wasn't like the main thing, which I personally really like in books. I think my biggest complaint is a personal thing because I read The Sky in the Deep 
right before I read this one, it was very easy to see the similarities between the two and compare them to each other, and they felt almost like the exact same story, just with different characters. I really like the addition of the Kier people. I'm hoping to learn more about them. Hopefully there's going to be a companion novel about them in the future, but overall I did enjoy the two companion novels. I think they're a lot of fun. And yeah, I gave them both 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that is my October wrap-up part 1. Part 2 will be up in a couple of days. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!